morning, Atlantis Mayor. Hey, good morning, Dan. I thought we'd talk to you long before this. Yeah, I did too, but uh, it's real, real happy to give you an on-time wake-up call. We're not used to sleeping all night. Gee, that's a great thing. This is Mission Control Houston, this uh, live picture now from the shuttle space lab module. This picture showing uh, mission specialists Ellen Baker and Bonnie Dunbar in the uh, Space Lab Science Workshop in the rear of Atlantis's cargo bay, beginning to set up the lower body negative pressure device. That's the white uh, sack that you see floating on the left side of the screen next to Baker. Uh, that uh, device uh, will be used uh, uh, in which uh, near 18 crew members, uh, Vladimir Dzhurov, Gennady Strekalov, and Norm Thagard will each take turns climbing into over the next uh, several days. And in fact, after Atlantis's undocking from the mirror uh, to help uh, draw fluids evenly throughout their bodies in a countermeasure activity designed to help them uh, readapt to Earth's gravity uh, once uh, Atlantis returns to Earth on Friday. Dunbar has also been involved in uh, activities aboard the Space Lab this morning with the Mir-18 crew, who are in essence uh, three guinea pigs, uh, being perfect subjects for the study of the effect of long uh, exposure to weightlessness on the human body. In this uh, picture from the shuttle Space Lab module, de Zhurov is uh, putting his shirt back on after having been instrumented for the lower body negative pressure device by Bonnie Dunbar. Uh, payload Commander Ellen Baker is on the left side of uh, the picture. She is uh, working to uh, hook up uh, all of the uh, telemetry uh, uh, wires and, uh, and monitors uh, for the lower body negative pressure device while pilot Charlie Precourt uh, in the foreground there uh, armed with a camera to uh, document all the activity that's taking place uh, in the shuttle space lab. Yeah, and I understand you're also looking forward to getting a good old-fashioned American hot dog. <laughs> hot dogs and hamburgers and ice cream, those will be great. All right. If you would pass the microphone, please, back to Commander Gibson. I have a few questions for him about the work he's done this week. Um, Commander Gibson, you managed to dock the shuttle. You brought it in on schedule, under budget, and within an inch of its life. How much training did you get on the ground in a simulator for that? And then how did the real thing compare to the training? Well, Le Leanne, there's a there's a real important point that I want to make here, and that is that we brought the shuttle in uh, on time and successfully accomplished a docking. Uh, I was the one who had his hand physically on the controls, but uh, I would not have gotten there without the help of an awful lot of folks who you're looking at right now, uh, and an awful lot of folks on the ground in mission control and the entire team that put that all together. Uh, as you mentioned, we have spent a tremendous amount of time in the simulators training to do this particular task uh, and training to do it under ideal conditions uh, and training to do it under less than ideal conditions and all of those things all of those things play together to uh, to really prepare you to go out and actually do it uh, we had somewhat ideal conditions in some ways and we had less than ideal conditions in other ways uh, for the actual docking and the fact that uh, the fact that I, I hope we made it look easy. We wanted to make it look easy, and uh, the fact that uh, we came close to making it look easy was because of all that training and because of all the great uh, and excellent work that got done by a lot of people on the ground uh, and, and the people that we had up here. Well, of course, now that you've put them together, you, the whole crew, you're going to have to take them apart coming up this uh, Tuesday, if all goes according to schedule, on July 4th. Why don't you tell us how that works or if you wish, pass it to another crew member and they can answer the question. Uh, I'd like to have our pilot, Charlie Precourt, talk about that. 
Well, we're looking forward to the undocking for a couple of reasons. Uh, we uh, are going to be able to show it to you uh, through video from both the Soyuz and from the shuttle, and uh, we'll be able to share with you the experience in a little more detail than you saw during the docking. Uh, it basically, operationally for us, is uh, pretty much the reverse of the process that got us to the docking. Uh, the Soyuz, uh, commanded by uh, Anatoly here, and uh, also accompanied by the flight engineer, uh, Nikolai, they will undock the Soyuz return capsule before we leave the station, and uh, they will move to a position where they can actually film our undocking of the shuttle. And then we will move out uh, further in distance from the station when we undock, and uh, we will station keep at a position where we can refilm the docking of the Soyuz capsule uh, by uh, Anatoly. Uh, all of that should make for some very interesting and, and be able to demonstrate on film the processes that we went through to uh, coordinate uh, bringing these two massive vehicles together in the first place. Uh, so we're really looking forward to that, and we're really looking forward to sharing it with you on the ground. Let me ask uh, Anatoly then a few questions, since he will be out taking pictures. Позвольте мне задать несколько вопросов Анатолию. Commander Solyev, what are you looking I'm ready. What are you looking forward to? Что вы ожидаете? I understand we're talking about the undocking and uh, about uh, flying around the complex and taking pictures when the shuttle is uh, undocking. Is this correct? Yes. Well, first of all, I think it will be a very beautiful sight because when we were approaching the Mir station, uh, the entire complex is very beautiful. And we can also see through the window and uh, look through the window and see the shuttle, which is uh, very, very close, and it's a very beautiful bird. So I s think that uh, when we see all of this from the Soyuz spacecraft, if, if we how we see uh, Atlantis depart from Mir, we will put this on film and uh, share our uh, feelings and opinions with you. Commander, how long will you be on the Mir once the shuttle Atlantis departs? После того как shuttle Atlantis расстыкуется со станцией, как долго вы будете находиться на станции? We have uh, a rather short mission, and on 30 August, we will return to Earth. The next crew will... Uh, uh, it's uh, just slightly over two months, and we'll be relieved by another crew. Commander, briefly, how do you think the history of this mission is going to be written in your country? Если можно, в двух словах. Как вы считаете, э, в историческом плане, э, какой, э, какое зна историческое значение этот полет будет иметь для вашей страны? Well, even during training in many training in many interviews, this uh, question was encountered many times, and I think that I think. Uh, it is uh, worthwhile revisiting it uh, because it is very important. We, with this flight, are beginning a great program, and I would say it's more than a program. It is an absolutely necessary cooperative effort to uh, put forward cosmonautics, and the, this process must uh, proceed quickly because these two systems can supplement, complement one another. And this development process, uh, this the, its acceleration of this process will be significant. Uh, Leanne, this is Hugh Gibson. Now, actually, we had, uh, you always want to be prepared. We have an expression on board the crew, which is gatovi, segda gatovi. Uh, but we have an expression, which, which means prepared, always prepared. Uh, we had two cakes with us. We had an actual cake that uh, one of our other astronauts, Marsha Ivans, made for us, and we also had, just in case it fell apart in the during the 
launch, we also had a uh, an inflatable birthday cake with candles that we used. So we were well prepared. All right. Well, to the crew of the Mir and the Space Shuttle Atlantis who are in orbit, thank you. Spasiba. And we hope you have a safe return. This is Mission Control Houston. Work continues aboard the Shuttle Space, Space Lab module in the rear of Atlantis's cargo bay as uh, Mission Specialist Bonnie Dunbar monitors the progress of uh, biomedical tests which have been ongoing most of the morning on the Mir-18 crew members, Vladimir Dzhurov, Gennady Strakalov, and U.S. astronaut Norm Thagard. Uh, just to Dunbar's left is flight engineer Gennady Strakalov, who has been in space for 110 days now. He and his commander, Dzhurov, and uh, his crewmate, uh, Thagard, will be returning to Earth next Friday aboard the shuttle Atlantis for a landing at the Kennedy Space Center. The tests uh, have been in two parts so far, barrel reflex testing using a special type of neck cuff uh, which uh, measures the arterial strength of the, uh, the veins and the neck muscles as well as blood pressure uh, and other cardiovascular responses after long exposure to microgravity. Also on the left side of the screen in this picture coming to you from the shuttle space lab is the lower body negative pressure device, a sort of cylindrical type sac in which crew members crawl into uh, to use a negative pressure to more evenly distribute fluids flowing through their body, preventing them from pooling in the subject's head and thus uh, being used as a countermeasure against the uh, effects of long exposure to microgravity. Well, let's go into the uh, cockpit. This is the flight deck of, this is just like a flight deck of an airplane. This is the commander's seat. Please uh, have a seat. Note that the uh, view is just the same as out of an airplane. We have screens here for displaying data from computers. That's the uh, seat for the pilot. The commander is the uh, pilot, and, and the, the uh, pilot actually is the co-pilot. That's the uh, control for uh, controlling the engines and a area for the life support system. This panel is for controlling computers. During launch and landing, the uh, commander controls the aircraft using these controls. Behind, we have the rear deck, or the aft deck. And this is where the commander is, uh, was during the uh, rendezvous and docking. And he has the ability to control uh, the craft from this station and to make observations through these windows. On the right hand, we have, on the right-hand side, we normally have a panel to control the manipulator arm. But uh, right now, this uh, has been converted for use by a mechanism for controlling docking. Note that the uh, view through the window here is extremely good. Yet 
it, uh, pulls it in the center, we have a panel for controlling the television camera system. We have many television cameras. Here. During the rendezvous and docking, Charlie was right here where we are. Normally, however, he would be found in the Charlie assisted in all aspects, during all aspects of the rendezvous. Operation during rendezvous and docking is very complex, however, it went well, and there were no problems during the rendezvous or during the docking. And right now there is an excellent view of the station through these windows. Maybe we can show this view through the window. This is one of the modules of the Mir station. It's the crystal module. And the crystal, uh, the crystal uh, contains the docking mechanisms. Fortunately, these mechanisms uh, operated well during the docking. Here are the other modules of the station. That module is called the Quant 2. And this module contains a service module for uh, doing performing extracurricular activity. And cosmonauts use this module during EVAs. Here we have another deck on the shuttle. Um, a so-called um, middle deck. The middle deck resembles the everyday deck or the housekeeping deck of the Soyuz. The members of the crew spend much time here. We have instruments here for uh, uh, providing food. We have, in a sense, a galley, a toilet. We have many uh, containers to store various instruments. And this metallic container on the right-hand side. Let's now proceed to the space lab. Sometimes we have a space lab. This is a laboratory that is found in the payload bay. And the access to this laboratory is through a tunnel which is approximately 8 meters or 25 feet. 
Crystal to Tim Hill, the tunnel. And it's uh, rather dark in the tunnel. No space lab at uh, Orchin uh, Yacht. But the space lab is very bright. Minoga set. There's a lot of light here. Of course, the primary reason for the laboratory is to perform all sorts of different scientific experiments. For example, we right now have experiments designed to study changes in humans during long-term um, exposure to the weightless conditions of space. But primarily, this is a system for controlling all of the systems in the space lab. This is Mission Control Houston once again. Uh, this live picture coming from the Shuttle Space Lab module. Showing Mir-18 flight engineer Gennady Strekalov in the lower body negative pressure device. This is the first use of the uh, LBNP device uh, on this uh, joint phase of the uh, Shuttle Mir docking mission. Strekalov uh, will uh, be using uh, this device uh, every day now uh, for the next uh, several days through landing with the exception of undocking day. Houston Park for Ellen, uh, just a TVC update. We are now downlinking uh, the treadmill on TVC one. 